Hi, welcome back to At Your Service and this is lesson number 11, high flow oxygen devices. So last time we talked about air entrainment and low flow oxygen devices. Now for this video, we are going to talk about high flow oxygen devices. And the reason why they're called high flow is the opposite of low flow. Well, they're high flow because they can meet all of the patient flow requirements, at least theoretically and they can deliver a fixed amount of FiO2. Since the mechanism of entrainment for high flow devices is much better compared to low flow oxygen devices. Uh, the Venturi or the air entrainment mask has been traditionally known to be a high flow oxygen device, but it is somehow controversial. It is somehow controversial because when you increase the flow rate or when you increase the oxygen flow rate for a Venturi, the FiO2 may even decrease because of error in the air dilution. We will include Venturi or air entrainment mask in this um, video because more often the Venturi or the air entrainment mask can match the patient's flow requirements. We will still include it as a high flow device. Okay, so let us look at the specific high flow oxygen devices. So for number one, strictly speaking, this is the actual oxygen device your tracheostomy collar, your aerosol mask, your face tents, these are only attachments. They are not the ones responsible for air entrainment. Air entrainment happens in this part, in this yellow part, that can be rotated to adjust the device's um, FiO2 or air entrainment. Um, large volume nebulizer can be used at a flow rate of at least 5 liters per minute to 15 liters per minute and can deliver an FiO2 between 28% to 100%. Uh, by definition, the large volume nebulizer, or your, also known as your all-purpose nebulizer, is itself a humidifier because this part is filled with sterile water until this area, this line here. Oxygen um, enters the device through here. This will be connected to your flow meter and then goes out from here. This part will be connected to a breathing circuit or a large port tubing. This design of your large volume nebulizer is the reusable one. We have a disposable design, which looks like this. Hey, I'm not endorsing a particular brand. It just happens that this is the most common or the more common brand that you can see in the hospital. This is Aquapack by Hudson, but there are also other brands, which I just failed to, well, you can see them you can see the other brands online so this is just the same with the other one it can it can also deliver 28 percent to 100 percent fio2 and must be used at a minimum of 5 liters to 15 liters per minute and they are pre-filled with sterile water so the difference here is that they have uh, this device or this design has um, sterile water in it this one you have to fill it manually that means you have to open this, then fill this canister with sterile water. So can you use a flow rate less than 5 liters per minute? Uh, you can, but that, that defeats the purpose of using a large volume nebulizer. Remember that this part is connected to a large bore tubing or a large dead space. If you are using a low flow rate, then what happens is there's a tendency that the patient will be rebreathing the exhaled carbon dioxide and this will further lessen the FaO2 hence the purpose hence the original goal or the original indication for using a large volume nebulizer is ultimately well is ultimately defeated how does the patient use a large volume nebulizer remember that this is the main oxygen device now the large bore circuit or the breathing circuit that is connected here the other end will be connected to a different device, such as your aerosol mask, your tracheostomy collar, and your face tent. Because these devices are connected to your large volume nebulizers, therefore the flow rates and the FiO2 ranges are the same all throughout. This means that these devices uses 5 liters per minute to 15 liters per minute and delivers an FiO2 of 28% to 100%. So this is the same for all these um, attachments or for all these devices. Now, what I want you to what I want you to understand is what is the what makes this, for example, this aerosol mask, which is used for delivering aerosols, what makes it different 
from a simple oxygen mask. Number one difference is this one, the connection of, of the mask. For a simple oxygen mask, the adapter here is different because it is um, connected to a, uh, to a small diameter tubing or a Tigon that will be connected to a simple bubbler humidifier. But for an aerosol mask, you can't do that because this part is fitted or universally fitted uh, for a large bore tubing or a dead space or a breathing circuit. The other difference is the entrainment port. So for a simple oxygen mask, you will see an entrainment port with tiny dots um, surrounding or making a circle. But for aerosol mask, the entrainment port or the exhalation port is large, meaning dilution from air or air entrainment is greater with an aerosol mask, making it a high flow device. Okay, the other um, device is your tracheostomy mask, also known as your tracheostomy color, which is obviously used for patients with tracheostomy tube. Again, this um, this ribbon or this tie is uh, placed under the patient's neck and then connected here. This will be placed on top of the tracheostomy tube. And this one will be connected to your breathing circuit or to your dead space. And third, your face tent. Your face tent, um, in contrast, is placed under the patient's chin. So um, try to imagine this part is this part. Uh, this part touches the patient's chin. This one will be connected to again the large bore tubing, and the tie um, is trapped above the patient's um, ears. This. Okay, so you might have encountered a different design for your tracheostomy mask and your face tents, which looks like this. So if if the tracheostomy mask or the face tent has a connection like this, which resembles a tie gun or a tubing, then these devices become low flow devices. Why? Because you're no longer able to connect this to your large volume nebulizer. And as we've said earlier, it is the large volume nebulizer which is the actual or the true high flow device. So even if these devices are considered to be high flow devices, if the adapter is wrong or if you connected them to a wrong type of humidifier, then they become a low flow device. We have your Briggs adapter which is also known as your T-piece, your T-piece adapter. Why is it called T-piece? Because it's look, it looks like a letter T. <laughs> Anyway, this part of the Briggs adapter is connected to your endotracheal tube, your tracheostomy tube, or to any advanced airway that the patient uses. One end of the T-piece will be connected to the breathing circuit or the large bore tubing, and the other end, you may leave it like that, or you may have a 50cc dead space right here to act as a reservoir. And lastly, let's show, let's talk about your Venturi mask. As I've said, the Venturi mask has been traditionally or classically known as a high flow device, but the controversy with Venturi mask is that it doesn't always function like a high flow device, especially if you're using a high flow rate of oxygen. But what you need to remember or what you need to note about the Venturi mask is that there are two designs for your Venturi mask. This one on the right is the traditional design for your Venturi mask and there are still a lot of hospitals that use this kind of Venturi mask. And there are three adapters colored blue, yellow, white, green, pink, and the orange one. And each adapter has a specific FiO2 delivery and therefore has a specific flow requirement. I don't like this device that much because I have to bring all the adapters with me when I am at the bedside. So I generally prefer this design. Uh, you can only see two colors, white and green. And for you to adjust the entrainment or for you to adjust the FiO2, you only need to pull this one and then rotate. So follow the arrow in this one and it will tell you how much FiO2 the device can deliver. Okay, so for many of you, you might ask what is the purpose of this part? So it's missing here, but it should be, well, it should, so in this design, it's missing. It should be right here. The purpose of this um, adapter is to prevent um, covering the entrainment port like this, because the moment that these holes or these entrainment ports are covered, for example, by your hands, by the patient's hands, by the patient's blankets, the FiO2 becomes undiluted. And what happens is that the patient receives a pure oxygen and no longer the desired FiO2 that you want. Okay, so those are the high flow devices. Please watch out for my next videos. 
um, regarding oxygen therapy. So subscribe to this channel and keep updated. See you on the next lesson.